Welcome to the Lifestyle Medicine Update. I'm Dr. James Machino. You know, recent studies have confirmed the recommendation I've made to patients over the last couple of decades, which entails doing everything possible to get your blood level of the bad cholesterol, the LDL cholesterol, into the range that will help to prevent having a heart attack. Now, according to the Cleveland Clinic, and I quote, everyone ages 20 and older should have their blood cholesterol checked every five years. The guidelines recommend that you have a complete lipoprotein profile that measures your total cholesterol, your LDL cholesterol, the HDL cholesterol, which is the good cholesterol, as well as your triglyceride levels. And the test should be performed after fasting for 12 hours. Now in recent years, uh, I live in Ontario, uh, the doctors are doing something very different now. They're not, they're not screening a lot of younger people for cholesterol levels until they're like 50 years old, which I think is a mistake. And they're not insisting that people fast for 12 hours before the blood is drawn to check it. The thing is we have much more evidence to understand or interpret cholesterol levels after a 12-hour fast, so we, they, we, it gives more meaning to the numbers. So I don't quite understand why this has changed. But in my view, in the view of the Cleveland Clinic and sort of the American standard, it is you get your blood cholesterol checked at least every five years after the age of 20, and it should be after a 12-hour fast. Now, the Cleveland Clinic also goes on to state, elevated LDL cholesterol, the bad cholesterol, is a major cause of heart disease. LDL cholesterol causes the buildup of fatty deposits within your arteries, reducing or blocking the blood flow and oxygen to the heart. And this can lead to chest pain and heart attack. It can also cause other problems like stroke, kidney failure, and poor circulation. Now we've known much of this information for many years, but what's becoming increasingly clear is what is the ideal blood LDL cholesterol level to prevent heart attacks and other cardiovascular problems. So in high-risk patients, the LDL cholesterol target has been adjusted down. So they have to get it down even lower. The ideal place for your LDL cholesterol to be is at or below 60 milligrams per deciliter or 1.5 millimoles per liter. It used to be they would allow people up to 70 milligrams per deciliter or 1.8 millimoles per liter. They say, no, no, that's not good enough. You need to get it down lower, below 1.5 millimoles per liter. The problem is that if you don't have other risk factors for heart disease or you've never had a stroke or a heart attack, in medical circles, doctors will allow your LDL cholesterol to be as high as 100 milligrams per deciliter or 2.6 millimoles per liter, thinking that, you know, you're not really high risk, why do we need to get your cholesterol level down? But to me, this recommendation doesn't make any sense at all when you consider that cardiovascular problems are one of the leading causes of death in our society. In my view, every adult should strive to get their LDL cholesterol into the absolute ideal range, which is below 60 milligrams per deciliter or 1.5 millimoles per liter. Uh, as an important way to prevent blockages from forming in the coronary blood vessels in the heart and elsewhere in the body. I've made this a personal goal for myself over the years and I've encouraged others to do the same. This is how you prevent plaque from building up in the artery wall in the first place. Now we know that high LDL cholesterol is not the only risk factor for heart disease and stroke, but it's one of the very most important risk factors, so it has to be taken seriously. As such, I recommend that you know your LDL cholesterol number. If it's above 60 milligrams per deciliter or 1.5 millimoles per liter, then you should strongly consider becoming more aggressive in your lifestyle practices to lower your LDL cholesterol. This means eating less or no high fat animal foods like beef, pork, and lamb, as well as any milk or yogurt that contains more than 1% milk fat. It also means avoiding cheese, butter, cream, ice cream, whipped cream, sour cream, and other high fat dairy products. It means avoiding mayonnaise, tahini sauce, cream sauces, creamy salad dressings, as well as milk chocolate, coconut oil, palm oil, and most pastries, especially pie crusts, and the icing on and layered into many cakes. You can, you can also lower your LDL cholesterol by avoiding deep fried foods and foods that contain trans fats. On the other hand, foods containing soluble fiber help to lower LDL cholesterol, which include foods like 
all beans and peas, including soybeans and, and soy products, as well as artichokes, ground flaxseed, psyllium husk fiber, and fibrous fruits like apples and pears and plums. Now, if all these dietary practices don't get your LDL cholesterol into the ideal range below 1.5 millimoles per liter, then speak to your doctor about taking a statin drug to help you accomplish this goal, or consider a supplement of red yeast rice, which is a natural source of the active compound that's used in some statin drugs to lower cholesterol. So the natural agent in red yeast rice is monocolon K, and like statin drugs, it blocks cholesterol synthesis in the body and may also block the absorption of cholesterol from the intestinal tract. But if you use red yeast rice as a supplement, you yes, we have to ensure that it's a standardized grade. For example, one capsule might be 110 milligrams, standardized to 3% monosin and 1% ankyflavin. However, whether you take a statin drug or red yeast rice, it requires monitoring by your physician for potential side effects, which can include liver damage, the triggering of type 2 diabetes, memory loss, and other issues. So where possible, get your LDL cholesterol level into the ideal range through the prudent dietary strategies that I've outlined, as well as remaining physically active. So I've included the references for this information in the text below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.